The set is a sandbox action adventure game developed by Mask of God. Currently only available on PC and in early access, although from what I can tell the game seems like it's pretty much finished and they're just really adding additional content. This game is often referred to as a mix between Terraria and Minecraft, and after my playthrough I would say that's dead on. While I'm not a fan of Minecraft and Terraria was a bit too difficult for me, this game has taken great elements from both of those to make a game that A, anyone can play no matter your skill, and B, is just crazy addictive. In this way as well, the game feels very familiar when you first pick it up, and while there's definitely a bit of a learning curve, once you've got your head around how everything works, it's very easy to get sucked right in. Being one of those games where you keep finding out new things as you go, it starts out simple but has many elements and mechanics that you'll discover along the way. You'll start your game off on a randomly generated island where you'll find an older man set up in a small home. He will guide you on how to use tools, access caves and the like. And then from there you are free to do absolutely anything that you want. Apart from your island there are many, many other islands in this world each one procedurally generated with various biomes, random villages, and unique resources to discover. I will note that these islands are pretty bare and basic, apart from the odd one having like a pirate camp or a village. So from here you can build, begin exploring, start your settlement, and whatever else you want. While I kind of felt a bit lost at this point, it really didn't last long. As you start building your own home and various crafting stations, you'll immediately get a few goals to work towards, namely finding and collecting resources. As you pick a place for your settlement as well, you can also work on building additional homes, furnishing them and placing useful structures, and as visitors come to your settlement, if you have what they want, they will become a new villager who lives with you. Each villager will have a set of requirements they need to keep them happy, mostly just a place to sleep, a furnished room, and a steady food supply. Normally I find these kinds of things very difficult to manage, especially as your settlement grows, but it's very easy to do in this game. You'll simply need to designate a chest for food, and the villagers will automatically help you fill it. They are very useful in this way as they can spend their time collecting wood, planting saplings, farming, fishing, crafting, and more. They will basically do this automatically, but you can also assign and prioritize tasks to ensure maximum efficiency within your village. Again, I usually find this stuff really complicated and tricky, but without basically any guidance, I managed to figure it out on my own very quickly. Each type of villager excels in a certain job, whether that's fishing, hunting, or crafting, and they will also be able to sell or buy certain items from you. So as you slowly fill up your village, your game really opens up. Not only will you have a steady supply of food and materials and access to a whole range of new items, but this also allows you to focus on one of the main aspects of this game, the dungeon crawling. On the many, many items that occupy this world, on each and every single one, you can explore the underground caves. Simply pop down a ladder and off you go. Here you'll find enemies to fight, unique resources, or chests filled with loot, and much more. It's also incredibly rewarding to explore these caves. Not only does the ore open up a lot of crafting options such as new weapons and armor, but the chests you find can supply you with some very good items. I always found it so fun to explore here and see what stuff I could find. In these caves is where you'll also find the main sort of progression to your game. Back in your village you'll have that old man that you met at the start of your game. He's not very handy but what he does is give you quests. It's kind of this cycle where you'll get a collection quest followed by a boss quest and repeat. So he basically wants you to find an item in the location where you'll find the boss and then after you bring that back to him, he'll want you to defeat the boss. Defeating these bosses not only provides some epic rewards, but also kind of levels up your village, giving your villagers increased health. This can be very beneficial as these villagers can come with you as you explore and fight in these dungeons. Each different biome that these islands have will give you a different themed underground with different ores, monsters, and items, and they also all come with their own different boss. 
Now before I go into the combat, a really important thing I want to note here is the accessibility settings. The game has a lot of options to customise based on your needs. So you can increase or decrease difficulty, remove hunger, and much, much more. Honestly, this made the game for me. I tend not to be great at combat in these games, and when I can't get past a boss no matter how hard I try, it really kills the game and I usually stop playing shortly after. So being able to lower the difficulty so that the bosses were still a challenge but I was able to defeat them made me very happy. So combat here I found to be fun and fast paced. And yes, this is probably down to the fact that I have my difficulty turned down, but it made the game more fun for me and that's what games are all about. As you begin defeating bosses and exploring other islands, you'll come across these really fun and unique weapons. So it just makes it super exciting when you get one of these to go back out there and try it out. As I mentioned before, there are several different environments to explore, not only different biomes, but subsequently different themed caves as well. And linked to this is the amazing quality of music in this game. Every kind of environment had its own sort of soundtrack, and not only this, but the quality was just outstanding. Not just a simple tune, but a song that really fits the theme of the area and brings that sort of ambiance with it. It kind of reminded me of the songs you find in RuneScape, where it's not just a tune, but it's like this own little themed music, if that makes sense. Especially for an indie game such as this, it's really rare to find music of this quality. Another thing I truly appreciated about this game is just how many objects or mechanics were there simply to make your life easier. There's a great menu with plenty of shortcuts such as being able to quick sort items into chests from your inventory. You can also place chests near crafting stations to auto use items or even lock items in your inventory to prevent them from being moved or used. You'll eventually get a whole bunch of pouches which serve as mini inventories within your inventory. So there's an ammo pouch, a food pouch, potion pouch and more. It's also done in a way where you'll be given these items as a reward for something, which just makes progression so worth it. You'll get access to mounts that will make life so much easier, there'll be transportation pillars and more. Just a whole bunch of stuff that you get later in the game that makes you feel really rewarded for the amount of work you've put in. Back to your village and there is just a lot of creative freedom here. Initially I thought there wasn't that much crafting here as you only really start with one crafting station but as you progress you'll unlock more and there ends up just being so much furniture, so many weapons and armor and all these things you'll be able to create. You can also have multiple villages here. I ended up taking over a pirate town and made that my second village which was really fun. Genuinely, the only thing I didn't like about this game was how difficult I found it to figure out the controls. But I did play this on the Steam Deck, so that's probably not even a game issue that's a Steam Deck issue, I think. Probably the only other thing that bothered me was how lost I felt during my first hour or so of play. But again, I tend to struggle with learning these games all the time, so that's more of a me problem. Nessess is currently labelled as early access, but it genuinely feels like a fully released game. Obviously there is more content yet to come, but it already feels jam-packed with stuff and already so well worth the price. This game sells for just $15 Australian, so incredibly cheap, literally the price of a Big Mac burger meal at McDonald's. And you could probably even get it cheaper if you wait for it to go on special. So excellent value for money. I've played games three times that price with half the content. Just another great game that feels like a genuine passion project where the developers listen to their players and update the game based on that feedback. If you kind of like the idea of Minecraft or Terraria but never really felt like you were getting into them, I highly recommend trying this out. And also, if you do love Terraria and Minecraft, definitely try this one out. Thank you so much for watching, please feel free to subscribe or leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!